It's the start of a new year and a new decade for that matter. And usually at the beginning of a new year, we try to hit the refresh button on our ideas and behaviors. And I'm gonna share with you eight ideas and behaviors that you should ditch and leave in 2019 so that you can set a new path forward that will allow you to increase wealth in 2020 and for the next decade. I'm Shane of The Wealth Five, and I create videos to help you eliminate debt, grow your income, and build wealth. If you've ever been on social media, I am sure that you've seen those posts that tell you to never go to college, don't ever sleep, you should have multiple streams of income, run several businesses, and do it all so that you can become a millionaire by 21. I am sure that you have seen those posts and if you're anything like me, you look at those posts and you cringe and it might even give you a little bit of anxiety because you're thinking like, where have I gone wrong with my life? Why have I fallen so far behind? And you start to think, will I ever reach my financial goals? Well, I'm here to tell you that I'm going to tell you some things that actually will help you reach your financial goals. If you leave behind certain mindsets and leave behind certain practices that will actually help you become more financially stable in 2020 and beyond. So I'm gonna tell you those eight things right now. Let's get into it. The first thing that you want to do and leave behind in 2019 is that you want to stop avoiding conversations about money with your family, your friends, and maybe even with your coworkers. And the reason why you want to stop avoiding these conversations is because all it's doing is allowing us to stay behind and stay stagnant. If no one knows what's the going rate for a particular job, if no one knows what are the best savings accounts or the best stocks or investments or anything like that how do we expect the information to be shared and get out there and for all of us to be in a better financial position it's really helpful when we all talk to each other especially one of the things that i've learned is that when you talk to other people especially about salary for example you realize that so many people undervalue the work that they're doing and therefore you end up with people who have a large gap in their wage, which is one of the things that we actually have. We have the wage gap. The wage gap between minorities and non-minorities and also the wage gap between males and females. And all of this could be avoided if people just talked a little bit more. The same thing within our family circles. If we all talked a little bit more about the savings accounts that we have, the investments that we do, how we budget, and even what our will and trust look like. All this information just helps to propel our generations for and allow us to be more financially savvy. So make sure that you're having these conversations with your family, your friends, and maybe even with your coworkers. So that way we all are in the know, we can make more informed financial decisions and that will empower all of us to make a lot more money and be more financially savvy in 2020 and in future decades. People leave money on the table with their employer so many times. They do that either by not negotiating their raises or by not taking the employer match. And there are so many ways that you can get employer matches. It's not just the 401k, you have the 403Bs, the 457, and even the HSA and the FSA plans. There are so many ways that we're all leaving money on the table through employers. And people are also leaving money on the table when they are business owners. They are leaving money on the table by not raising their prices, by not negotiating contracts. We're gonna stop leaving money on the table because all it's doing is taking money out of your pocket and leaving you behind so that you're not able to live your best financial life. Take the money off the table, okay? Another thing that I am tired of seeing, especially on Instagram and even on YouTube, is the rhetoric about people not having to go to college and working for the man. Stop criticizing people for taking the traditional route of going to college and being employed. 
these are needed positions in life. We need people who are going to go to college and become doctors and lawyers and accountants. They are vital and critical parts of our society. We need those people. Everyone cannot be an entrepreneur. Everyone cannot be a business owner because who will be able to service your business if they don't make money from somewhere? And a lot of times those people aren't able to start businesses and become entrepreneurs if they didn't start by being employed. So stop criticizing people for going the traditional route of going to college and then getting a job. All that matters is that we're all out here getting money. If you decide to get money through being an entrepreneur, that is perfectly fine. If you decide to get your money through a regular paycheck every two weeks, that is fine too. One thing that I want to challenge us to do in 2020, and I'm really glad that a lot of people are starting to do this and realize that one stream of income is not secure. We used to think back in our grandparents' eight days that having that one job would be secure, we would work there for 40 years, and they would give us a pension. But hello, <laughs> these jobs ain't loyal, okay? They are not loyal, they do not care about you. They will fire you in a heartbeat they will lay you off in a heartbeat and it's so important to have multiple streams of income so that way you're able to bounce back if anything happens and you're able to just move on and then pick up a job whenever you can or if you have multiple sources of income you're able to get to a lot of your goals faster if you want to start that business the more money you have come in the faster you're able to start that business and invest in it if you have multiple streams of income, the faster you'll be able to pay off that debt. The faster you'll be able to invest in your future so that you're able to retire early. So really consider having multiple streams of income and leave that one paycheck, that one source of income, leave that behind in 2019. Moving forward, we're thinking about ways to make multiple streams of income. And really, the key to it is doing it so that you're not having to work harder for it. I'm sure that every single year there's someone out there pleading the same case. Let's leave stunting for the gram back in 2019. It is only hurting our pockets in 2020 to stunt for the gram. There are so many ways that people stunt for the gram. It's not just the typical money to your ear type of post. It's stunting by going on trips that you can't afford, by buying clothes that you can't afford, by doing all these things that we cannot afford. So make sure that you actually have your budgets in place and that you are making financially responsible decisions. And let's, let's be real, I love being a trip. But what I'm doing in 2020 is making sure that I'm using travel rewards so that I can travel the world for free, okay? So make sure that you're being savvy about how you are stunned for the gram. And while I'm on it, Let's not judge people who are out here living their best life because there are some people that can truly travel the world and they're probably debt free. And there are people who can probably have, you know, a Range Rover and be debt free. So just because you see people with really nice things, that doesn't mean that they can't afford it. But if you are one of those people who have been taking trips, knowing that you can't go out on any excursions because you just spent all your money on the flight and the hotel, Make sure that when you come back, that you get your finances in order and that you try to do some travel rewards so that you can take your next trip for free and really stunt by having some money in your pocket. <laughs> but let's try to leave the empty stunted for the gram in 2019. So while I agree that this is a problem, I also want us to stop blaming the school system and our parents for not teaching us about money and using that as an excuse for our poor financial behaviors. So I will admit that I grew up not learning a lot about money from the school system and from my parents and things that I did learn from my parents might not have actually been right. But does that mean that I should use it to handicap myself moving forward? Look people, we are in 2020. We have Google, we have the internet, we have books, we have so many ways to get the financial knowledge. And if we are doing what I said in number one, we're actually having the conversations with people about money, 
There are so many ways to get the knowledge about money and how to improve our finances that we can't continue to blame and use the fact that the school system and our parents did not teach us a lot about money. We have to find a way to get some personal responsibility and move forward with our finances. And I fully acknowledge that this is a structural issue that has put a lot of people in very bad financial circumstances and has helped to repeat the cycle of poverty. But for those of us that have the access to the internet and want to know, we have the will to know more, let's actually do a bit more and find out for ourselves how we are going to do better and stop the cycle of poverty and low incomes and all those things. Let's stop placing all the blame and take a little bit of responsibility for our personal finances. In 2020, we are not living paycheck to paycheck, okay? Yes, it'll be hard to get out of the paycheck to paycheck cycle. It's going to take maybe getting another job, but it's definitely gonna take some budgeting and some delayed gratification. Just because we get a paycheck and we have enough money to buy something, that doesn't mean that we can afford to do it because you have to get out of the paycheck to paycheck cycle and be able to start saving money and investing money so that you have a nest egg that you can rely on because what I said earlier, these jobs ain't loyal, okay? And so you have to figure out a way to get out of the paycheck to paycheck cycle because it's doing us an injustice. Figure out a way to get out of it, get out of it. Leave the paycheck to paycheck behind this is the most important one that you have to leave behind if anything in 2019 you have to leave behind the limiting beliefs we are not taking into 2020 the beliefs that you can't do this you can't do that because I have this, I can't do that. Because I did this, I can't do that. We have seen time after time where people who have only a high school diploma or who have disabilities or who have so many limiting circumstances be able to rise above that, especially because of this digital age and be able to become millionaires, to become billionaires, to be able to do so many things that they probably wouldn't have been able to do if you look at just the their life on paper. Many people will probably bet them out and say, you know, you're not going to be anything. But we see that that is not the truth. So leave those limiting beliefs behind because it's doing you a disservice. You can become anything that you want. You can make any amount of money that you want. You can do anything. You just have to figure out a way to do it. So the first step, though, is to think thinking about how you're going to get rid of those limiting beliefs and think that anything is achievable for you because it really is. And once you have your mindset right, that's how you're going to unlock other levels of potential. If you want to learn how to set financial goals, it's going to help you to ditch these ideas and behaviors in 2019 and do things in 2020 and beyond that's going to increase your wealth you want to check out this video right here on how to set financial goals. And I hope that you like this video and that I'll see you in the next one.